Hi, I'm Leanne Ely. I'm a nutritionist, a New York Times bestselling author, and some people even say I'm a life coach. I started The Daily Dish Show to share my story, my truth, and my journey to vibrancy, and to inspire others to do the same. Because it's all about grit, perseverance, and finding a way despite the odds. It's about embracing the whole woman, not just the parts that are easy to love, and feeding her heart, mind, body, and soul. But I found that this isn't just my story. It's your story, too. It's go time. This is The Daily Dish. It is, and it's Tuesday. Who's in the house? I hope you're here, and I hope you're ready to go, because we are still hot melt 30 and I'm so glad that I've got our Patsy here already. It's a great Tuesday to be together, isn't it? It's Transformational Tip Tuesday. And boy, oh boy, do we have some good stuff for you. Juicy stuff for you today. Um, we're talking this week a little bit about longevity, um, lifespan versus health span versus all the things. And there's our Patsy giving us our ha- first hashtag, Hot Melt 30. Woo-woo! Uh, Teresa Vaughn. Hello, hello in North Idaho. We've got Alice in the house as well. If you're here, go ahead and say hello. We always like to greet our ladies coming on in. Hi, Jennifer. It's good to have you here. Anyway, so we are going to be talking some more about this idea of longevity and health span versus lifespan and how we can be in the place of having both, right? Because we can. Hi, Sue. Good to have you here. So we got all that going on. Um, we also have like some amazing things going on. Have you seen our BOGO? We've got a BOGO. It's a buy one, get one free of our buttery body balm. This is unlike anything you've ever had. Let me just read what some of this stuff is in here, which by the way, one of the things that have helped has helped me, have you noticed how quickly I healed? You know, you can see a little bit of pink leftover and a little bit of pink right there leftover. But other than that, I mean, I healed really, really fast. And one of the things that I used, I used a little bit of castor oil. Well, guess what? Castor jelly is in this number one ingredient. We also have in here um, the castor seed oil as well. We also have um, coconut oil, lavender oil, and cinnamon leaf essence, vitamin E. You'll, you'll smell it all. You can smell that cinnamon just a little bit. It's really, really lovely. And it is feeding your skin. Your skin is your biggest organ. What you put on your organ is, go, is, is if you're eating it. Yes, you can eat this. I don't su- strongly suggest it's not tasty. Hi, Diane. Hi, Sandy. Helen, good to have you here. But if you want this and you will love it and you will, your skin will as well, it is thick, it is emollient, and it is amazing. It really helps with the moisturizing of your skin. Buy one, get one free. Go to savingdinner.com forward slash BOGO, B-O-G-O. You're going to get, Patsy, you're going to love it. You are absolutely going to love it. It almost it tingles because of the cinnamon, but it's really, it's quite lovely. I like it. Okay, so we have that. What else do I have to tell you about? Oh, guess what we're starting on Thursday? You got it. Um, Oh gosh, and here I am without a Limiting Beliefs book in front of me. Our workbooks came. By the way, if you are in the Limiting Beliefs class, they are on their way in the mail out to you. Isn't that fantastic? Hi, Jackie. So we all have some kind of a limiting belief, don't we? Well, if you want to crush your limiting beliefs and you want to live without bounds, without boundaries, without anything standing in the way of you and your dreams and your purpose and your mission on this earth, it's time you get into this class. Hop on in. We start this Thursday and it is going to be amazing. Um, The hot seats are going to be hot. The one-on-ones are going to be amazing. And I'll, I'll just tell you, this is something... I think everybody needs, I know I need this and I get to facilitate the whole thing, but believe me, I'm going to be doing the work myself. Savingdinner.com, savingdinner.com, you know that website, right? Uh, Forward slash no limits, no limits. (laughs) 
Sue. <laughs> Something special happening? You know, I didn't play pickleball this morning, Sue. Like one of my first day. I mean, I'm having the day off and my feet are thanking me. The balls of my feet get really sore after playing. So, yeah, you know, I've got all kinds of things that I'm dealing with. Anyway, that's how that whole thing works. So we are, so I, I'm just very excited about that class because it's happening. I'm also excited about the Hot Mill 30. I don't care that it's June, what is it, June 7th or something, 6th, 5th, uh, I don't even know what day it is. What day is it? I got you, it's the 6th. Okay, it's June 6th. So what? <laughs> I mean, are we going to just wait till the next one or are we going to jump in where we are? I mean, isn't it time to get started? That That's why I'm talking about this all this week. I want you to understand that what you're doing when you're doing the Hot Melt 30 is setting yourself up for what's next in your life. That's what we're doing. We have to start with our bodies first. It's the only vehicle we've got, right? That's it. So that's why I'm talking a lot about this. I've got some tests and everything, like I said I would, for you today. It's going to blow your mind a little bit. It's going to blow your mind. All right. So we have that, and um, Hot Melt 30 is easy to find. You go to savingdinner.com forward slash 30. Spell it out, T-H-I-R-T-Y. You can get your guide there. You can get the kit sent to you, the whole nine yards. It's all there. You can watch the webinar if you want. Here's the thing you need to know. This is foundational principle for you getting what it is that you want in your life. You might say, but you know what? Like dropping 20 pounds or what, 10 pounds or whatever, that's just not on my list. What about feeling better in your own skin? Is that on your list? What about having more clarity? What about getting rid of the joint pain? What about feeling really extra, extra good. What about having more energy? What about sleeping better? All of that, is that on your list? Just saying, check out the Hot Melt 30. Uh-huh, see, Sue, she said, no cheating and my joints are thanking me, day six. Right on, right on. There you go. The other thing that we have going on is, besides our BOGO sale, is have you seen it? But we are now, if you order a bunch of stuff from us and you spend $300 or more and you're in the lower 48, you are going to get free shipping. The shipping will be on us. We made that decision as a team to do this because of um, your loyalty is really what it is and how much we appreciate this. Basically, a woman-run company, a woman-owned company, um, but a bunch of women doing the work. Sorry, Mark, not you. We love him, but <laughs> it's us. It's doing the heavy living. We, there's, it's very core, small dream team. You know who we are. And um, we are here leading every step of the way, all with the same vision, all with the same mission. And we appreciate your business because it's not just me that you're helping out here. You're also affecting other families that are here and are part of this and are a part of this mission. And they take this, you know, I have to say, one of the things that I've been in business for 23 years now, one of the biggest blessings in my life was coming across Jenny, Amber, and of course, our Lindsay as well. We don't see her as much because of Alaska, but you know, they're a dream team for a reason. They not only um, all work really hard and do the work, the great work that you know about, but they also have the same heart that I do. And you know, you can't buy that. You just can't. So that's love right there. So if you want to continue to love on us, you continue to go and get our stuff. Okay. And speaking of being grateful, our gratitude journal is here and it is absolutely beautiful. Um, a lot of you have been ordering it and loving it. And we have a new batch coming in. We flew through our first batch. Flew. But the, it's the optimistic gratitude journal because optimism and gratitude are so hooked right at the hip. And that really makes all the difference in the world. Um, so you'll see how this whole thing works on and builds on one another. OK, you can find that at savingdinner.com forward slash grateful, grateful. And I'm grateful for you. All right. Thank you so much. Patsy says she loves the new journal. It's And it's so pretty, isn't it? Um, it was built with love and care and we all poured through it and we did. We all worked on it. So um, I love it too. 
Hello, Margo. She's camping this week and she's still connecting and doing this. Can you believe that? Autumn, you're here too. Good to see you with her hashtag hot milk 30. All right. Well, you know what? Let's get down to business because I got some stuff for you. And you know, yesterday when we talked about this idea of lifespan and health span, you know, I, the reason I wanted to talk about this is because I wanted to make sure that every single person understood the power of what's available to you and for you simply by making small little decisions. Because we want to understand that our, the health that we are enjoying right now or we're not enjoying right now is all about what we brought to the table, so to speak right? Most of it is. Yes, there are genetic things or whatever, but remember your genes might load the gun, but it's your lifestyle that pulls the trigger. Remember that. Remember that because that's the, that's the absolute truth. Never give up and say, oh, it's my genes. So, you know, therefore I'm just going to, it's just going to be a free for all. Absolutely not. So what we need to do is, is um, we have to be looking at some stuff. And I, one of the things that I'm interested in, I've just ordered is a book from Peter Adia, um, who is a MD. He really promotes a lot of carnivore type diet stuff, which I'm not really big in, but he also is very protein centric, prioritizing protein in your meals and all of that, which I really appreciate. Um, he's in very good shape. Um, so, I mean, he, he lives this example out and that's important, right? And I love what he has to say. I've, I've listened to a few of his podcasts and read his blog and what have you. I'm on his email list. Um, but he really is all about longevity. He's become a longevity doctor. You know, he had, he was, um, was an emergency care doc for a while and did cancer for a while. And then just said, it just was so depressing, just cut it all out and decided to focus on the, the keys to longevity. He says he hates the word, but you know, longevity is longevity, right? Longevity means something. So he said, uh, in his opinion, um, longevity is primarily limited by cancer, um, heart disease, and neurogenitive disease, and um, metabolic disease, also known as insulin dysfunction, diabetes. And he said that exercise is one of the most critical, important things that you need to be doing on a daily basis, some kind of, some kind of something. And stability exercises and centering exercises. And we're going to talk about some of these tests that you can do on yourself because we lose this as we go. Boy, have I really, since I started doing stretching classes, I found myself, but the flexibility that I used to enjoy is long gone, but I'm working on getting it back. Um, if you don't use it, you do lose it. Things tighten up, things get loose, things get you want things to be tightened up that should be tightened up and you want things to be looser that should be loose. So we don't want to be all bunched up, right? And stooped over and have a big old dowager's hump on our backs and all of that. It, it simply doesn't have to be that way. And that's what his whole thing is. He says that we want to minimize our blood glucose, but eat protein, sleep, and don't neglect our um, emotional um and mental wellness, 100%. That all influences our longevity. And I love this one thing that he said. I want you to hear this, and you might even want to underline it if you are taking notes. And he says, the healthcare system gets paid to treat diseases, not prevent or cure them, right? You know, it doesn't exist to improve health. All right. Sorry, but that's pretty much the truth. And his opinion is, is that if you wait for something to go wrong before you start doing uh, the right things, you're going to really regret it. Your future self will thank you for what it is that you start doing today and what becomes a habit and how it is that you clean up lifestyle habits that need cleaning up. So let's talk about, let's talk about this lifespan, health span things. It, to me, it's sort of a manifesto. Of, of sorts, because it's basically declaring that if you take your health span plus your life span, then the equation of that is going to be um, the, the, that's going to dictate what your health is or isn't. 
it's really going to tell you exactly what you've got to work with and what, where you need to be improving. And so we're going to be looking at some longevity tests that they've done that have the research attached to them. And by the way, if you don't get your show notes, um, you should be. It's easy. Just go to savingdinner.com and just there's a pop up for the newsletter and we have the show notes in every time. All of these tests will be listed. All of these tests that I'm going to be discussing today also um, will be um, have the, all the research hooked up to it. So you can look up and read the research if you like. OK, I think that's always important. So longevity tests are to to give an assessment of your overall health and potential lifespan, assessing physical fitness, cognitive function and overall wellness. So. Yeah, they're not going to provide a guarantee that if you pass these all in, in flying colors that you're not going to be hit by a truck tomorrow, but they can offer you guidance in areas that you might be weak. And it's important to know these things, not so that you can put yourself down and tell everybody what a miserable failure you are, whatever it is, that, you know, however you want to beat yourself up, but so that you can take action on the areas that you do not have control over or that you failed in, you know? Um, you might not fail necessarily in all of these, or you might be able to almost get there, but why not work on it, right? There's a program on mine. I saw it. It was a free thing teaching you how to do the splits on both sides within like six weeks. And every day you had to do certain things. So I had a girlfriend who did this and she was just like astounded that at the age of 55, she's out there doing the splits. Well, I used to be able to do the splits back in my cheerleading days. Um, I can still get down there almost to the ground, but not, not enough. And I don't, that's really not on my list, but it is a, a sign, obviously of flexibility, isn't it? And there are things that we can do to increase our flexibility. And that's one of the most important things. Now, the first test is called the sit and rise test. I talked about that yesterday a little bit. But um, this assesses your muscular strength, your flexibility, and your balance, okay? So this is how you do it. You sit on the floor. Um, Cross-legged is how I said, but when I read, you know, was reading the study, it said that you just need to sit on the floor. But the point is you sit on the floor, and then you stand up using as little support as possible. So if you can stand up without using your hands, you know, you get a 10. If you need to use something to help you stand up, from there, you know, you, then your score goes down depending on how much support you need to get back up. But they found that um, this is a, a study published in the European Journal of Prevention Cardiology. That's a lot. Found that a person's performance on the SRT is significantly correlated to their longevity. So how long you're going to live? Let's let me see you get up on the floor, get up off of the floor. Used to do back bends. I used to do those too, Patsy. I was just crazy. I mean, all that stuff I used to do when we were girls. Um, the other one is your walking speed. I never knew this, but the research has shown that the faster walking speeds are often in, in associated with increased longevity. So here's how you perform the test. You measure a set distance in your home, like 10 feet, and the time it takes you to walk that distance at your normal pace. And the study that in the Journal of American Medical Association, JAMA, found that the gait speed is associated with survival in older adults. So in other words, if you're a slow mover and you can't get things going, if you're shuffling rather than walking, you've got some work to do there. We've got some work to do. Another one is hand grip strength. That's a, I thought that was an interesting one too. Now, you know, in the... Uh, how many of you have your husband's open jars for you? Well, my just my little hands just can't do it. Well, there's times when that's true. And there's other times where I've just, it's out of habit. I just give it to Mark, right? I just give it to Mark, open it for me. Not anymore because hand grip strength has been shown to have a, a massive impact. Um, and th there's a dyno dynamometer, a hand dynamometer you can purchase like on, Amazon or something. You can do that. But a strong grip indicates robust overall health. And there's a ton of studies 
um, that have linked grip strength to to um, longevity. Isn't that so interesting though? You have a set of grips, really good idea. You can use them and just be sitting there watching TV and doing your hand grips like that. But you know, when we lose our strength in our hands, I remember my mother just completely lost any kind of strength in her hands. And I was like, mom, come on, you know? But again, if you don't use it, you lose it. So strong suggestion, y'all, if you're listening, start opening those jars by yourself. Start doing those hard things yourself when you can, if you can. Let's see what you can do. Number four is memory and cognitive function tests. You know, I don't have one to tell you about, but there is online, you can find a zillion of them, a zillion of them. And you can see they'll test your memory. It'll test your, um, it'll test your uh, cognitive function. It'll test your abstract thinking. Um, there is a app called Lumosity, if anybody's ever used it. I used it for a long, long time. Um, Terry Walls actually turned me on to it because this Lumosity test just exercises your brain and both sides of your brain and makes you really, really think. And there were certain things, they'd have you go through these paces every single morning. And I did it for the longest time. And then I just, I don't know, one day just stopped. But there's tests like that. You can find them. You can go onto YouTube. You can find them like galore. But it's good for your brain to do these kind of tests to see where you are. Can you do quick math in your head? You know, I was finding myself going, well, I used to do that in my head and then started writing it down. Now I'm forcing myself to do the math in my head and remember to carry the one, right? <laughs> so you know exactly what I'm talking about. But we has a, have a tendency to just, it. maybe it's a little less that we could do than we used to be able to do. But if we keep at it, we're going to see improvement at it because remember, as we get older, it doesn't mean we stop growing brain cells. It doesn't mean that we can't make neural pathways. Yes, do puzzles, read books, all those kind of things are going to be really great. But I also suggest that you just find a gym for your brain and do some of these little things that are kind of mix it up a little bit. Um, there's a lot. Sudoku is a good one. Crossword puzzles are good. Um puzzles on like putting together jigsaw puzzles are even good. You know, it, it requires that hand eye kind of coordination. Oh, this one fits into here. Always make the outside first, make the border first. That's what I always say. <coughs> Excuse me. And of course I left my water upstairs. Uh, great brain app. Oh, you were talking about um, Lumosity. Yeah, it's a really good one. There's also heart rate recovery. And Lynn, you'd know about this being a trainer, but you're, how quickly do you recover after really exerting yourself? And it's interesting because I've watched myself really recover well. And also my resting heart rate has gotten really low. It's about 59 now. And that for an athlete, it should be about 60. So doing pretty good there. Um, those are the things that you want to see. And when we look at this, it, it, they're saying, according to uh, the New England Journal of Medicine, this is directly linked to better longevity is how quickly you recover after you've, you know, been out there exercising and doing your thing. There's also a breathing test, right? Because the ability for you to be able to hold your breath for a long period of time, at least comfortable, you know, somewhat comfortably, it and a sign of healthy lung function and healthy lung function is definitely connected to longevity. I know this for a fact after watching my mother die of COPD and losing her lung function and watching somebody just deteriorate before me, my very eyes, you can see that. You can definitely see that. These breathing exercises are so good, but they did a study and chest journal found that lung function is a long-term predictor of longevity. It's great stuff. We want that, right? Hi, Linda. I'm glad you're here. The next one is the waist to hip ratio um, because, um, you know, Abdominal de obesity is a risk factor for hypertension, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and even cancer. And if you measure your waist and your hip circumference, then divide that waist measurement by the hip measurement, that's going to give you an idea of what your ratios are. And you want lower ratios, obviously. Um, they're, they are, um, they're generally healthier. And this is a study published in PLOS Medicine that associated higher whipped waist to hip ratios with a lower life expectancy. 
something we need to get on. And I know so something that I know with a lot of my coaching clients are very concerned about, especially postmenopausal. Postmenopausally, we notice the weight starts to go right there into our tummies. And what do we do about that? Well, we, you know, it's very simple. We have to really watch and modulate how many carbohydrates we're taking in. A Dr. Adia doesn't recommend a whole lot. And a whole lot of longevity doctors are saying, yeah, just be a little bit careful with that. We store it. Okay. So just to understand how this all works, when we intake any kind of carbohydrate, whether it's simple sugar with, you know, a chocolate bar from the grocery store, or it's a complex carbohydrate, like a sweet baked sweet potato, it all translates into this is glucose. And this goes into your liver. Your liver holds on to this and translates this into glycogen. Glycogen is like an energy store. And that energy store is what your body uses to burn things up, right? Uses, uses it for energy and, and what have you. However, once that glycogen has been tapped out, then your body turns on its, well, I don't, I shouldn't say turns on itself. Your body then turns to fat as as the energy so it uses energy instead so you could see eating a lot of carbohydrates you're going to go into eating the carbohydrates storing the glycogen using up your glycogen and then get frustrated and going where's the why isn't the, why am i not losing the weight that i want to lose could be that and especially for women who have a larger waist circumference than they want this is an important factor to understand that Let's starve your body of little glycogen and let it use the fat as, as energy instead. Does that make sense? It's, it's pretty interesting, but I'm, I certainly suggest that you go do a little investigative reporting on that if that's something that interests you. Uh, number eight is the stair climb power test. This is easy, really easy. I did this one, pass with flying colors. You need to know where you are. So here's how this works. It measures the time it takes for a person to climb a set number of stairs, okay? Um, it's a measure of lower body strength and also cardiovascular fitness. So this is what you need to do. Find a flight of stairs with 10 to 12 stairs. I have a perfect flight of stairs right here at my house. And, you know, you want to make sure that you're safe doing it. You want to make sure you have a handrail if you need it. And there's not a bunch, you don't have a bunch of stuff on the stairs. Make sure it's nice and clear. And then you stand at the bottom of the stairs and you start a timer. You can use your phone, start the timer and climb as fast as you can to the top of the stairs without running. And then you stop the timer once you get there. And what this indicates is the faster your time, the quicker, the, the better your fitness levels. And they found, this is the study, the European Heart Journal found that participants who could climb four flights of stairs in less than a minute, had longer longevity, and it was so associated with good heart health. Can you do that? There's a test for you. Try it. So when I when I say this, all of these things, I'm not. This is not a condemnation type of a, a, a thing that's just saying, oh, you can't do any of that. You know, too bad for you. I'm saying use this as just sort of a plumb line, where am I on this on this healthy journey? Where am I on all of these things? Is my cognitive mental health, emotional health, is that healthy? Is my physical health healthy? Am I healthy, as healthy as I can possibly be? Is Do I need to be checking out what's going on in my waist? These are the things that we need to ask ourselves. And, um, the next question I would ask you, are you willing to do the work that it takes to get to where you want to go? Because this is all, these tests aren't just tests, but you are called in this life to a life on purpose and for purpose. And the only thing that you have, the only one body you have is the one that you're sitting in right now. You never get the chance to, to trade it in and get something else, get a younger, sleeker model. You got what you got. So if you take good care of it and you start thinking and casting your vision toward the future and saying, what do I want as a 65 year old woman? If you're sitting there at 55 or a, a 75 year old woman, if you're sitting in my place at 65, what do you want? Do you want frailty? 
Do you want, do you want to have bones that are going to snap easily? What do we want in this life? We want vibrancy. This is what I hear over and over and over again. I want to be like I was when I was in my 30s. I want to be as comfortable in my own skin. So you need to utilize a plan to take care of all of this. You need to try these tests out. And I would strongly suggest you hop on right now to the Hot Melt 30. Because the Hot Melt 30 is going to give you all the tools that you need to create a better you for a better future. Our, your future self is going to thank you. That's, the, that's all I have to say about that. I think it's really important that we start really making an assessment of where we all are. Because when you know where you are, you know where you want to go. Am I right? All right. That's it for you today. We've got Wise Women's Wednesday tomorrow. And if you missed any of our announcements, you can find them all at savingdinner.com forward slash announcements. Peace be with you. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining me today. You can find me on TikTok for daily tips to help support your most vibrant life. And remember, you are the author of your own story. Until next time.